Hey guys, it's Karen and I've got another ingredient video for you. I know that you guys like these um, videos and I wish I could do them more often because I know I do a lot of videos and I don't really get the chance no, I really get the chance to do these. And it's just because if I just sat here and talked about it from my knowledge, I have the knowledge, but it would be really disjointed and I need it to kind of flow for you guys to understand it. It's kind of like when I'm like I'm doing a presentation where I'm training people next week um, and I need to prepare for that and kind of put it all in, right? even though I know how to do what I'm gonna do, I need to put it in some kind of format that I can make sure I give you all of the information. So I hope you understand that. Anyway, this one is on lead. Um, I have talked in my previous videos about why I feel like I am, I am qualified to talk about this. It's basically a combination of my obsession with cosmetics over the years and working in medical research and the kind of qualifications I've got in order to do that job. So um, let's talk about lead. This was one of the requested ingredients. So I'm still happy to have requests for ingredients that you want to hear about. So what is lead? Lead is, well, it's an element in the carbon group, if that means anything to anybody, if you can remember your chemistry lessons. Um, and where is it found? It's found in the air, it's found in the water, it's in the atmosphere kind of everywhere, and it's in um, minerals in the earth. And therefore it is in cosmetics, it's in paint, it's in food, it's in our water, it's in a lot of things basically. And is lead dangerous? Yes, it definitely is. Lead poisoning is a very real thing. Um, it used to be in the UK, I believe the USA is the same, that paint had lead in it. So there are still some very old houses in the UK that have um, lead in the paint, which could be dangerous. And now there's no lead in the paint in paint in UK, etc. And I remember actually as a teenager being told not to chew pencils because of lead poisoning. Um, and the way that you can get poisoned with lead is by ingestion, so eating it, by inhalation, by breathing it in, and you can get it through the skin, you can get lead poisoning, but it's it's very rare and it's very, very hard to get poisoned through the skin because it's not it's not as easily it doesn't as easily get in basically. Um, so that's what, the, so there is a danger, there is a real danger, but nowadays lead isn't in paint, like I said, which was the biggest one, and there's a lot less levels of it everywhere um, because things are so highly regulated. So the most likely places you are to be poisoned by lead is in paint, which is kind of less likely nowadays, unless, unless you're living in a very old house. Some toys even used to have lead in it, but you know, all the regulations around that have changed. Um, the other place is food, and there's not really much you can do about that other than um, not eat as much fast food. Things like, you know, a McDonald's burger will have more lead in it than anything else. High fat content food, it's just another reason to eat healthy, really. What you can do regarding the food um, risk of lead poisoning is to make sure that you're taking enough taking in enough nutrients to enable your body to rid itself of the lead. So things like vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, calcium, um, and also the B vitamins, all of these things will help um, lead to be excreted from your body. So it's more about making sure, you know, even if you take a multivitamin, if you have any concerns about lead in your food, if you eat a lot of high fat fast food, then that's a risk from there. Um, the other place that is a risk is water, your drinking water that comes from the tap, that is a risk of um, having lead in it. There's a few things that you can do with that. You can buy a water filter that removes lead. Um, you'd need to check it specifically and check the type of lead, the mode of lead that it removes. Um, but what you can do if you don't want to buy a filter is you can either drink only cold water, don't drink from the hot tap. Hot water is more likely to have lead in it. You know, boiling it won't take the lead out, but hot water is more likely to have lead in it. So only drink, drinking water, boil, um, wash, whatever you're gonna use from your tap, use cold water. Um, and the other thing you can do is run the tap. So fill up about a sink's worth from the tap and then what comes after that, that's what you use for drinking water. Funny enough, that's a habit I've had for years and it's nothing to do with the lead. It was actually because I think the water is colder as it comes through. You know, if you let it run for a long time, you get colder water. Um, I probably don't let it run for long enough to get the benefit of, um, you know, safeguarding against lead. What they're saying is that lipsticks contain lead and that women eat their lipstick, ingest their lipstick, that some of the lipstick that you're wearing comes off and you swallow it therefore you're at risk of lead poisoning. So let's kind of take that apart and see what that means. Well, is there lead in lipstick? Yes, there is, um, but there's no added lead. The lead that's in lipstick is from the components of the lipstick. So do you remember I said lead is in 
earth minerals. Those minerals have colours in them and that's how lipsticks are made. But each of those minerals in their separate components become cosmetic grade and are cleaned before they even become an ingredient in a lipstick. So they have to have a certain lower level of lead in them um, before they are put together in a lipstick. So while somebody might say there's no control over the amount of lead in lipstick, there's not as a whole as, it's like saying there's no control over the level of, it's like saying there's no control over the level of bacteria in a cake. There isn't, but there is a level of bacteria control in the milk that you use and in the eggs that you use and you know in all the components of that cake and it's the same with lipstick all the different components that go into it there is control of those and the lead is part of the mineral and that will be cleaned to make sure that it's cosmetic grade so yes there is lead in lipstick but the amount is absolutely minute and poses no risk the next thing is women eat lipsticks. Well, yes, we do definitely ingest our lipstick because you put it on your lips, you'll put it on your coffee cup and then liquid goes past it and you'll take some of that down and swallow some of it. You're not eating the whole lipstick. And even if you were, you would have to eat hundreds of lipsticks, hundreds, thousands, to even get to the point where there was a accepted tiny, tiny risk, like a 0.001% risk. So. That I don't think there's a risk, basically, of <laughs> lead in lipsticks doesn't concern me at all. I think, you know, I, I did, I had a look to see what kind of studies there were. This is the other thing, the other reason when I do these videos, I want to see what's the latest research. Is there anything else that's scaring people that, you know, what, what is it that people are reading that's making them think, oh my goodness, there's all this problem with, with these lipsticks. And there was one report saying these 20 lipsticks contain lead, but yes, they do contain lead, but tiny amounts. Um, and there was another one saying about us women eating our lipsticks, but again, we're not eating a whole lipstick. We're barely ingesting any of it. So hopefully you've gathered from that that I don't have an issue with lead in lipsticks. I don't think you need to worry. Um, I think if I were a mother and my child was getting hold of my lipsticks and eating them, I might think that that was probably a bad idea, but I still wouldn't be worried about lead poisoning. I just think there's... It's just not something you want them to be eating. Um, so yeah, hopefully that has allayed your fears. Um, let me know if you've got any questions, of course. I do use the Bite Beauty Food Grade lipsticks because I enjoy them and I think they're all very pretty colours and they're really good formulas, but I don't use them because I'm worried about other lipsticks. Like I said, let me know what you want, um, what other ingredients you want because I've got a few on my list, but I think a lot of them are very similar and kind of the same groups of ingredients. Um, so I don't have in my mind what I'm going to do next. I will have a look. Some of the ones that have been mentioned are very like minor ingredients that you don't really hear much about. And I'm, I'm happy to do a video on them, but I'm not sure that many people will have even heard of it and be worried about it. You know, I'm not sure. There's some of us that know, <laughs> know the ingredients and kind of worry about every new ingredient or every news story. I'm one of them. If I read a news story about something, I would be like, oh, let me have a look into that. You know, um, there's other people that aren't really aware. So please do feel free to put in the comments what you want to see next. Um, and that's everything. I will give you a rundown of my makeup. I've got the YSL Fusion Ink Foundation on in BD40. Steeler Kit and Eyeshadow with a few MAC ones in the corner, Plum Dressing and Antiqued. Steeler Kit and Lip Gloss. And then on my cheeks, I've got Shantakai blush in Smitten. Um, these earrings are from Next. And I've got my new Zara t-shirt on. It's got love on it and then a little bit of a blurb underneath that I showed in a recent haul. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll speak to you again soon.